just in the basic logistics of it, it says to us, what do we need to do, we being IGI and in the operation of the mobile poultry processing trailer, what are the protocols for safe, clean handling of these flocks to get them into food for the farmer's use? So there's a, there's a real practicality to what we're doing today. Is like, let's look at this system, let's evaluate it. What's working, what can we do better? So there's that. Conceptually what this means is that people now have an option for their own, for their own food. They have, there's a dignity to this. They raise these birds, they're participating all the way through into the handling and the processing of them. And by the end of the day, they'll have food in their freezers for their family. I can't express what that must mean to families to be able to, to, be able to do that um, here, right here in their own backyard. Literally in their own backyard one day, but also in their own community backyard. The regulations right now are, are not necessarily written for these types of activities. They do fall under agricultural activities. And we have incredible support from our State Department of Ag Resources. Scott Soros has been amazing in, in getting it and seeing how that we, as a local community, have been working locally, starting small, small baby steps, and doing it safe and clean to the best of our ability always, transparently, always. So this, this is going to open up, I think, a whole other level of dialogue within the state agencies and communication, and I think it's going to be fabulous. My name is Nancy Cole, and uh, my husband and I have been, this is our second year, raising chickens uh, for meat, and this has been great because we've been able to um, raise the birds in our yard and not have to take them off island. That's always sort of been a big impediment mm. to it because it's just what an effort to get a ferry ticket and all that expense and you know spend a day traveling and uh, so this is was great. Um, last year I think we were the first people that they came and did it. Uh, we were the first place they came to to um, do the process and so they were learning still themselves and it, they arrived, I think they started at 9 o'clock and they were out of there at 12.30. It was like this 25 birds. It was very quick and uh, streamlined and, you know, tidy. We composted the, uh, the stuff that we didn't want. Didn't really have a problem with any creatures getting into, critters getting into it. It was, uh, it worked really well. Right. So. So what does this mean? What does this little mobile? Process? Well, this is this. Uh, this means opportunity. Uh, this is you know everybody talks about the value of local agriculture and and uh, you can't just snap your fingers and make it happen. You have to create an infrastructure so that not only people can sell, but in the case of meat, they can process. And uh, so slaughter facilities, even though that's not part of the public's romantic image of, of what local agriculture is, uh, is critical. And if you want to keep farmers especially on land like the vineyards, which doesn't necessarily lend itself to crop agriculture, and where animal agriculture is going to be very important if we're going to feed ourselves uh, without using the ferry. Um, uh, you need this kind of thing. Um, not that it's a pretty thing or a pleasant thing to behold, but it's, it's a really important uh, link in the food chain. How does this fit into the bigger picture? You're in touch with a lot of similar operations around the country. Well, and, you know, the, the issue everywhere you go is, I mean, wh one of the things that's retarding the, 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 the rebuilding of local food economies is that there are no facilities for processing animals. Um, that the consolidation of the meat business has been so uh, thoroughgoing over the last 10, 20 years. You know, we only have f four companies um, slaughter 84 percent of the beef in this country and, and four companies slaughter 70 percent of the chicken in, the, in this country um, that uh, and, and the big the big companies have been buying up all the small slaughter operations around the country and closing them down um, so that uh, we're not going to develop this kind of local food economy anywhere uh, unless we you know we rebuild the kind of infrastructure that goes with it so figuring out how to do it how to share the costs, and, and how to deal with the regulatory bodies, too, about this, who are somewhat flummoxed by this. Um, this, is my, this is my next question. I suppose that, that um, there, should, there would be a regulatory body here. Well, the problem is the, if you're the USDA or any kind of state inspection, the, 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 the irony of the situation is that the, the 
biggest, the bigger the operation, the more efficient it is for you too. So if you, if you only have budget for a handful of employees, uh, they're better used from an efficiency point of view at a, at a giant operation slaughtering 50,000 birds a day than they are at a place slaughtering 200. Um, so we have, to, we have to figure out how to deal with that scale problem. And that when we're, you know, when taxpayers and, and the government is saying, yeah, we want to support local food, they have to understand, well, that means money for inspectors. And that means um, uh, also rewriting the rules so they're more scale specific. Because the rules right now are being written for the really huge uh, slaughterhouse, uh, you know, 400 head of cattle uh, an hour. And they, their needs are different than the needs of a small custom place. Um, but yet we have this principle that one size fits all. So this is a model for a regulatory practice policy rewrite? A model well, it, for it a could be. Economy? I mean, we, you know, we have to kind of, that, that has to be negotiated between the, the advocates of local agriculture and, and the government. Oh, it's like self-sufficiency for me. What do you mean? Oh, um, raising these ourselves and then knowing how to process them is a great thing. Um, quality of the food's good. Community part's fun, too. Um, each farmer is able to come in one after the other, but then there's a cleanup in between each. And everybody uh, deals with their own stuff, whether it's the waste or the meat or whatever. Usually, we make a pack of wings, a pack of breasts, a pack of, necks. and then yeah, the necks go separate, and um, then you can go to the freezer and take out what you want. You don't have to defrost the whole bird. You know, if it's just the two of us eating dinner, you know, I'm not going to roast the whole bird. You know, plus you. All the different stuff my wife cooks, you gotta have the parts. The parts. Yeah.